This is episode number 178 of Smart Marketing Show, using Twitter for lead gen for WordPress businesses. Brought to you by our friends at ServerPress, Maker's Desktop Server. They make local WordPress development easy. Check them out at serverpress.com. And Cloudways. Cloudways handles all the hosting complexity so you can focus on building amazing WordPress websites without any hassle. Check them out at cloudways.com. Go and check out Bridget's new book, The Keys to Being Social, Being Real in a Virtual World. You can go buy it over on Amazon. And thank you very much to our patrons over on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash wpwatercooler. I'm Jason Tucker. I'm an IT director and web developer. You can find me at Jason Tucker on Twitter. And this is Bridget Willard. She can be found at Bridget M. Willard on Twitter. Hey, how you doing? Hola. Doing, how are you doing this fine, fine morning? Hey, I'm okay. I'm inside. I, think, I got climate control. I think as long as we start the show to where both of us are still in the morning, I can still say that. If you move a couple more time zones away, then we're not gonna be able to do this anymore. <laughs> no, no. I think I'm. I well, I'm. You know, if Germany or Europe ever allows visitors again. Maybe I'll go hang out in Europe for a month or something, or right. Indonesia. <laughs> but I mean, I'm supposed to be location independent, but you know, I would have to take my dinosaur with me. <laughs> oh, Just would it be the same without my cluttered background? Uh, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so we're going to talk about this like Twitter thing that you've used like a couple times, right? It's totally a fad. And you've never taught anyone how to use it either, which I, I think is just amazing that we're going to have this whole discussion about it. But hey, that, that's right? cool. That's cool. <laughs> hashtag sarcasm. Hashtag <laughs> dripping with sarcasm. Hashtag I've been on Twitter since tw 2007 and using it for B2B business relationship marketing since 2009 specifically in the WordPress space since 2015. And also, if you want to grab my book, it's $10 until the end of 2020, when it's going back up to what it should be. Um, not my consulting rate at $175, but higher than 10 <laughs> Can you imagine if you had to buy the book that it was for the, that consulting rate and you'd have to pay for however many hours it would take to actually read that book? Well, you want to <laughs> download my brain, like the brain picker zombies have at it. I got right. YouTube. I got a blog. I got that. That's everything that, that, I mean, people that read are like, wow, this is thorough. There's examples. I'm like, yeah, because I'm a teacher. And, and also I model the behavior that I teach. So I'm yeah. not some huckster. Listen, a lot of coaches make you buy their book for $25 before you can even pay them to consult. Damn. And 25 bucks is actually pretty cheap considering if you go if you go to college and, and have to go buy like the curriculum for that, you're dropping easily a couple hundred bucks. And so <laughs> 25 bucks, I get it, I guess. But man, I don't know. I would have just, I mean, come on. I've sent people your book. Every time they come on the show, I send a copy of your book. So, and I'm doing that for free. So, I know. I don't know. But, you know, if y'all want to sign up for somebody's course so that you can say you went to somebody's course, then do I that. Guess. You know, I'm trying to save y'all money and um, mistakes. Like, I learned all the hard way, so you don't have to. And a question I get all the time is, can Twitter be used for lead generation? Yeah, Warren is one of my students. He's actually my, one of my best students. Because he puts those things in their practice, um, and that's that makes a uh, makes it really helpful. Um, yeah. I'm not just saying stuff to say like I'm right and you're wrong, but right. if you see if you look at my Twitter account and you and you even format your tweets the way I do, you're mm -hmm. already going to be a way ahead. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I have a whole video on why hashtags should be at the end mm -hmm. because a hashtag is a link. And we talked about this the last time. So we don't think we just do, you know, and it's like in WordPress, what do we always talk about? 
Themes are for visual. <laughs> Plugins are for function. Stop putting functionality in your theme. Just right. because you can doesn't mean you should, right? We talk about this all the time with technology. And a lot of people just want to chase the next thing. It's like I had a consulting client ask me, how much would it cost to have 10,000 followers? And my answer was five years. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> you can't just overnight be an influencer. People actually have to want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's going to be True. bad for the transcription because I was laughing through it. People will have to want to hear what you have to say in order for you to be an influencer. But as far as like using it for business, I mean, a lot of people say Twitter is just this dumb thing about the Kardashians and Trump. But if you look at your local weather station, your local news station, everybody has a Twitter handle. Right. Um, <laughs> The Hackberry Post Office, which is this dinky post office for my zip code <laughs> in the south side of San Antonio, has hashtag Postal Proud. Huh. A sign, a big sign that says that. You know, That's hashtags came from Twitter, but yeah. now it's so part of our culture that we make fun of it. And, um, so originally, like you talk about all the time, what was it, 2022? Yeah. Twitter was text messaging, you know, text messaging to a very large group of friends. <laughs> and so if you approach it as a way to have a relationship with people, then it's really successful. Like small talk. In our culture, in our WordPress culture, Jason, a lot of our friends don't like small talk right because they feel like it's a waste of their time and uh, i just want to say that it's snobbery, snobbery. Um, but also not practical i mean who want who sits down at a table with somebody they don't know and starts talking about the nuclear crisis in north korea right or their mental health crisis well, and you get and you get the you get the upper hand on Twitter because you you get to either join a conversation that you're essentially eavesdropping eavesdropping into because you're looking at it going like oh oh yeah that's in, that interests me I have something to say about it or you're the one that's going to be starting the conversation and as long as you're that as long as you're going to reply to them and this is where the lead gen portion of this comes into play as long as you're going to reply to them and actually provide them with with um, with good content and good, you know, good replies and good strategies, and and you're not like constantly pitching them. Um, I think you should be fine. And they're gonna go if they look at, you know, if you've ever had a conversation with Bridget, you would find that at some point you're gonna go, who is this person? So you go click on their their face, click on their name, and then the profile will come up. And then you'll look at the profile and you'll say, oh, so Bridget does like marketing stuff on the internet. That's interesting. I use the internet. How do I can, how can I do marketing on the internet? And then they, you know, you start digging into it and you can go click on like, you know, her bio link to go actually to our website. You can read the bio itself that will explain some stuff. And see, those are, those are the things that most people are going to do when they're interacting with you. And if you haven't set yourself up for success by updating that, um, that, that, uh, that profile and the link and, and any of those sorts of things, then no one's going to really want to talk to you. You're just going to be some egg that's, that's yelling at the, the sky. Or, I mean, <clears throat> a lot of people like this, I'm not calling anybody out, but let's be serious. So a lot of people, a lot of our people have something kind of snarky in their bio or something that's like an inside joke of an inside joke. You know, like right. uh, a friend of mine plays Minecraft and watches all the Hermit live casts. And uh, there's a whole thing going down right now with the mycelium resistance. And it's all about the principle and the secret base that was that got found. And then there was a new one underground. 
in the vault, but then they blew it up and they found another secret one. And then they recruited this guy who was Batman. And like, I could talk about the mycelium resistance, like put hashtag mycelium resistance in my bio. And then you're like, what is she talking about? Like, what does this even mean? Is she like for fungus and against bacteria? I mean, what is happening here? So right. <clears throat> unless you are one of the people that twitch about <laughs> Minecraft, what right. are you even doing? Right. So like, but there's a bit of, there's a bit of street cred to that though. Like you can't, you can't dis discount the street cred side of it. Like you, you do want to have at least a little bit of an insider piece so that the people in the know respect you as a person that's, like not, not everybody is going to be a new person coming to your account, right? Okay, here's the thing. I mean, yes. I'm playing devil's advocate. Here, I know, obviously. I know but, you are. But there were so many, like, so I'm like, you're asking the wrong question. Who, I, uh -huh. I know you, Jason Tucker. We've been following each other on Twitter for, I don't even know how long, let's just say 10 years, long time. Right. Okay, I don't go to your bio. I have no idea what it says because I already know you. People aren't going to your Instagram bio, your Facebook page, your right. Twitter profile, if they already know you. Mm. They go there when they see something or they want your, a link to your website, right? Gotcha. gotcha. I don't need to go to your bio. I can hover over your car and it will say something, but then I'm like, Oh yeah, that was the name of the website, WP Agency Summit or something, you know, whatever. Right. Right. So that is our elevator pitch. That's our opportunity to have 160 characters of an elevator pitch. And you want that bio to be so um, generic, like keywords, so that Twitter will suggest your account to other people. Literally, the new client I got, I asked him, how did you find me? Because I don't accept the internet as an answer, right? <laughs> he said, Twitter suggested your profile in my feed, and I started following you. And then I saw that you had an opening for a new client, and that's why I DM'd you. Wow. Yeah. I that's get impressive. clients from Twitter. So, but what does my bio say? It says that I'm a marketer. I do content marketing. I teach people to do social and there's probably hashtag. I don't even remember what my bio says. I would have to look it up. <laughs> you know, I, I, here it is. Let's see. It says social media manager specializing in WordPress products and services. So what do I do? I'm a social media manager. I used to say relationship marketer because it makes sense to me. Because right. I'm not just some person that pushes buttons on the internet. I build relationships with people. And then when you hire me, you get those relationships with you. You get my tribe, right? Right. But nobody knows what that means. So I had changed it to what people understand. I'm a social media manager. Who's my audience? WordPress products and services. Then mm -hmm. I put, I'm a keynote speaker, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a podcast co-host. And I teach people how to do social. And then the hashtag I'm using is SATX for my locality. Right. Okay. So I used to have all kinds of clever things in there. I learned the hard way since you don't have to. Giving unsolicited advice since 2011. It's fine to do that. Yeah. But you're not going to be suggested. And when people go there, like, will your next door neighbor know what you do? Will your grandma know what you do? Does your spouse know what you do by reading your bio does mm. that's the thing that's who it's for and it's fine to have our jokes about the hermitage you know and lisa and i are constantly you know talking to each other about it. i don't even play minecraft she's interested in minecraft i'm interested in her so therefore i listened to her talk about minecraft and now i know all about the mycelium Resistance and Mumbo is my favorite character. It's like watching an animated comedy show. Okay. Right, right. And I've never played Minecraft. But what is important? Liesl is important to me because right. she's important to me. What she cares about is important to me. That is called relationship building. Right. Yeah. So yeah. 
Yeah, I have tons of friends who are into all kinds of stuff, pajamas, cosplay, uh, furry, whatever. It's not right. that. I just go, oh, wow. And so when I see something on the internet that reminds me of them. It's another tribe collection. It's another way to engage with them, too. Like, I see something about Disney. I'm I'm going, hey, Adam, Susie, did you see this? You know, <laughs> I see something about wine. Hey, Warren Nita, did you see this? Right? I see something about letterboxing. Hey, are you and Jen going to go letterboxing this year? Right. It's because I care about the people that are in my world that you can have those small talk conversations that become something else. So having a little bit of personality in your bio is not a bad thing, but make sure what you actually do is first, right? Yeah. And so like in yours, let's just look what yours is. Just a second, Jason Tucker. I don't know. I don't know. Ah! I'm an IT church director. Okay, that's what you do. Uh -huh. You're founder of WP Water Cooler. That's what you do. You make WordPress shows, perfect use of hashtag for WordPress. I podcast to find stuff on Google, to find my stuff on Google. Now that's funny, but people understand what it means. And you're married to Jen and you're the exact opposite personality as me. And I don't know what CIRT means. Church and IT roundtable. Oh, and then there's something else between brackets with a circle. I have no idea what that is, but that's not for me. Right. Yeah, I got what I needed. You're a husband, you do a podcast, you go to church, and you're an IT director, and you Google yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was nice of you to put it on the screen. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> so, but that, but I know. So now I know what you're into. So if I hear a podcast, I could go, hey, did you hear about this? Or when I see what you're tweeting about, you have see, this is what I talk about. You have to give something. It, to be so there's two sides of it, right? There's me who's trying to develop relationships. That's what lead generation is. Lead right. gen is short for lead generation. And it means, you know, you could talk to the fancy funnel pack people and all the HubSpot people in the world. And they're like, oh, what's your sales funnel? Uh -huh. Yeah, I have forms on my website and that works. But where are my... Where does it come from? It comes from Twitter for me most of the time. Yeah. And if it's not Twitter, it's somebody who heard from me that I know on Twitter. Because where am I spending my time? Twitter. And where people go to Twitter to read. This is the most important thing. Like Facebook, I take a picture of myself. Choo -choo, I'm on a podcast. And then I put on Facebook and I'm off. Same with Instagram. I go to Instagram at night and I just go, a cat, a dog, a rainbow, a sunset, a cat, a dog, a <laughs> rainbow, a sunset. It's relaxing, like sleep, sleep. LinkedIn, hey, I did the thing, I got promoted. LinkedIn, though, like it is good for lead generation in a lot of ways, but people make it more like a car salesman, and that's uh -huh. what's bad about it. You don't even know. I get so much mail now, like, oh, I really want to connect with you. I feel like we have so much in common. Why don't you schedule a call with me? I get a ton of those too. Okay. It's so annoying. I could be so uh, NSFW right now about how inappropriate that is. Yeah. Um, because it's like asking, you know, you're not, even, you're skipping over all the dating process. Right. It's too much too fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why don't you start by like commenting on the things that I have? So as a person who's developed wanting to build, you are, it's on you. It's on me to do the outreach. Now, Gary Vaynerchuk used to talk about this all the time. And so does Scott Stratton about when he started wine, uh, doing Twitter for wine library, his dad's store, he would look for people who are asking about wine pairings and he would reply to their tweets. Yeah. I remember those days. Okay. Scott Stratton did the same thing. That's how they built their account. You cannot build your account without interacting with people. Oh, you can buy yeah. followers, but you're not going to build your account. You're not going to build your influence. You're not going to do anything. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of work. So yeah, I have 16,000 followers. 
over the uh, since 2011 on this account, but I also only sold 59 paperbacks. So like, right? You know, you would think that I would have easily sold 100 in the first month. You know, but because this is it's exactly what I'm talking about. But people are going to buy what they want to buy when they want to buy it. Right. The yeah. book is not Oh, I did this for two months and now it's a waste of time. No, it's going to be true no matter what, because it's, it's not specifically about a platform. It's about the behavior. And this is what right. people forget. Affinity leads to loyalty. Affinity is like, oh, I feel like, oh, I see Jason's picture. He's my friend. Oh, there's Lincoln. Oh, cute dog. Right. Right. Affinity leads to loyalty and loyalty leads to sales. We want to jump over affinity. That's the emotional attachment. Human behavior cannot be hacked short of like addictions and things like this. So right. it's not about, it's not specifically about the technology, but Twitter is not a fad. Okay. So 20 minutes into the lecture, let's be serious here. <laughs> no, I mean, but that's the premise that people get wrong. So they're like, especially our people, because we can program things. And because we can, we do. Yeah. And that's just that's just me talking. It would be like a monologue. Right? And so yep. that's that's not what you're trying to do. So that's why I recommend having lists and mm -hmm. also spending five minutes a day minimum in your home feed looking for things to reply to reply not retweet retweeting is just sharing and usually anonymously i mean not anonymously but without emotion mm -hmm. just like you're passing a flyer down it's this came across my desk here take a look at this kind like of thing. without even that most of the time right? right it's just you you have you ever did that like when we used to work in offices Remember that? <laughs> and then there'd be that. something on your desk. You're like, what is this? Uh huh. I mean, that literally happened. Um, Devin Walker came back from India when I was working with the folks at Give. And there was some purse on my desk. I'm like, was somebody working here? What, what is this? He goes, Bridget, I brought that for you from India. I bought this for you. It's a present. I'm like, I had no idea. It was just on my desk. Yeah. Right, it, there was no card. Uh huh. I I thought, well, there was. I'm only there once a week. I just saw it was somebody else's thing, you know. And and we would get paperwork. I'd have to ask Tom at my construction job, "What is this?" He goes, "Wasn't well, it obvious?" I'm like, "No, no, there's no context here." <laughs> context, right? Okay, so the reply button is the most underutilized button. And that's what small talk leads to bigger conversations, right? Yeah. And that's so small talk from a psychological standpoint is a way that people gauge, like, how are things going? Like, what's going on? You know, like, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Oh, that's awesome. So, hey, do you have like a couple minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about this with you. Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, that's how every conversation starts with, with people who understand this is the protocol right? It's a syntax right. of human relationships, right? You want to start your program. You have to do the open bracket and the question mark and PHP, right? Uh-huh. That's how we know that we're talking in PHP. Yep. It's syntax. So, hi, how are you? What's going on? Hey, I don't have two hours for that real answer. <laughs> <laughs> but I maybe you do sentences with a semicolon, <laughs> right? Okay. So, <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to, this is what you're actually going to do. Um, you're going to open up your home feed. You're going to have an intention in your mind. Like, what is it I want to give back to the world today? Or what is it that I want to answer for people? Cause if you just randomly scroll, you're going to be like, Oh, what am I doing? I should be doing this and that and blah, blah, blah. Right. But if you go in there with intent, um, 
there's a couple things you can do. You can either use a hashtag, like look at all the people using hashtag beaver builder or hashtag page builder and go like, I'm going to answer page builder questions or, um, or you can uh, look at hashtag A11Y, which is short for accessibility and go, okay, I'm going to answer some accessibility questions. Or you can go, I'm looking for people in my area, hashtag SATX. I want to see who else is doing business in my area. And then um, I don't know if you want to pull something up and I'll, I'll tell you what I would type. Like, how do you want to do this podcast master? Um, we can, we can pull up a, I could pull up like my Twitter and then we can take yeah. a look at a couple of them if you want. Yeah. So um, I, I did a, a demonstration of this in my talk about uh, building relationships with your clients. Um, um, it's on my YouTube channel. It's at Riverside. Okay. So let's, let's see. Wait. Oh, she looks so cute. Okay. But let's look for a hashtag. Let's look for, um, give me something that you, we, you can, we can talk about. Uh, let's see here. Podcasting? Oh, look, there's us. Look, look, oh. look. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> there's us looking at us, looking at us. <laughs> wow. None of my people are using hashtags. What's going on? No, Bridget? we can do a search. We can search for our own hashtags. Where's your search bar? Where is my search bar? Let's see. It should have uh, disappeared. Oh, yeah, it's up in here. All right. Well, you want me to search? search um, you for? can search for a hashtag or you can search for a term. How about how do I use social media for my business or something like that? Like type that in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like Google. If you put in qu quotes, you'll get a better... Uh, Sorry, it might be too specific. We'll we'll find out. This is how we find out. And go to latest. Oh. Uh, take out just use how do, how to how how do I use social media and then take out business. Do I? Oops, there's two uses and then take out for my business. Boom, boom, boom. Live demo, people. I know, right? As long as the uh, Twitter okay, API but go to die, latest. it needs to be all right. Well, we'll see. How do I use social me media in a more positive way? Advice? This is perfect. 11 7. So I would reply and say. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no, reply. No, click reply. I keep saying no idea. All right. All right. Um, oh, and it's all the bubble. It's in a, a, it's in a totally bubble. different. It's in a totally different window. So I can't show you that one. <laughs> What? Figures. <laughs> yeah, because I told it to share this the just the uh the one window and so okay. Well, I'll just tell you what I would say. Okay, yeah. how about that? So what I would say is what do you want to get out of social media? Question mark. I would probably look for ways to encourage people in your trade. What do you do? And that's it. And then leave that and go to another question. This is all so right. much fun. I could do this all day. I do. <laughs> People pay me to do this. Boop. All right. Oh, put that in there. Yeah. What do you want to get out? Okay. Um, Where's... Oh, shoot. I. Just, That's fine. I... Okay. So, okay. We'll just do it like this. Yeah. All ready for content camp bonus live work session. This is going to be fun. And then I would just click reply and say, um, have a great camp. What's your favorite parts? so far this year like because jennifer Bourne coaches tons and tons and tons of people and um i mean you can't say oh you look really cute because you're jason tucker i would say you look really cute so there's another like thing there's my reply okay yep go back we'll do one more podcasters it's show notes or show notes what say you thoughts grammar girl I would reply and say it's show notes, two words. It is not strictly podcasting related. That might be controversial, in which case it would be nice. All righty. <laughs> JJJ, oh my gosh. What, is, what was this Docker set up? It looked like a bunch of containers on a dump. <laughs> it is a bunch of containers on a dump. 
<laughs> in oh, that case, I would just go reply LOL. <laughs> right? And it'd be interesting yeah. to see if anybody replies back to you. And then you could be, and then he he might say, I know, right? There's just containers everywhere and I can't take it anymore. And then you could say, well, are you using WPCLI with Docker or what's your strategy? And it could be just like, oh man, I'm just complaining. And like, okay. <laughs> and then you just like it to end the conversation. But you've shown that you're having conversations. And here's the thing. Can you go back to your, um, can you refresh your screen, your home feed? See that? See the line? Okay, yeah. now it used to not have the line. So now it's threading conversations. So Twitter is doing the post bumping thing that Facebook does. So it doesn't uh -huh. matter how old the tweet is. It was an hour ago, but 20, 23 seconds ago, we were, we were allowed, you know, we um, had something to say about it, right? Right, like here's the here's my replies with within those, uh, right. each one of them, so. So people can see that and you know, you don't have to follow people to reply to them. But if there was a specific thing that you're looking for, you know, that's a good way to do it. Like you see people, that's what I've done. Like, how do I use social media? And then I'll answer a couple questions. Right. Um, that's a really good way to develop relationships or just look at the people you've already followed and reply to them. Like be a human being. If somebody's dog died, say you're sorry for their loss. If somebody's mm -hmm. stressed out, give them that sending virtual hugs gift. Right. For me, I can't see something like that from somebody I know and not respond. Because yeah. we we have to remember we're humans who are going through really hard things. Mm -hmm. And really great things. I just got a job. Congratulations. It, it takes less than 40 seconds to be a human. And people remember you. You know? Yeah. This got me thinking that that uh, in a um, in a future episode, we're definitely going to have to talk about um, stuff like I, I know that you not to bring this up as a, a topic that we should discuss right this second, but but the the fact that if you're someone who is a um, an expert in that field, that you find a place that people are asking for those for advice or asking for things that they need to to, to learn or do or whatever, like. I was trying to figure out how to put stucco on a wall and I'm like, well, watch a bunch of YouTube videos on how do you, how to do stucco. And then I finally realized like, I'm not doing stucco. I'm hiring somebody. So my money is going to go do this for me. But, um, I, you know, I started asking questions and I started asking questions on YouTube, YouTube accounts, got no replies back because they were recorded years ago and the person just doesn't care anymore. Um, but I also asked on Twitter and I wasn't getting any responses back. And I think I think one one piece to this is um, is that if you do have and hopefully this doesn't kind of um, go against anything that you do, but but that if, when you hire someone to do the social media side of it and you're asking them a very specific tradesperson question, that that social media person is probably not going to know all the answers to it, and they're probably either going to have to go back to the client and say, I don't know, how, how, this person wants to know how to do stucco. What do I what do I do? How, how did someone like you in that position answer one of those questions? Oh, I see why you wanted to dance around it. How does yeah, yeah, a yeah. non-technical person answer a technical question? Kind um, of. Like, but I guess what I'm saying is, is it worth it for someone who works at the company to be a person on that account as well? Of course. Or, or like, okay, so when I was working in construction, people said that I would, I, I led the construction chat, C-O-N-S-T chat, right. hashtag, and I brought in experts, you know, and then, yeah. um, you know, if I didn't have the answer, I would say, hey, let me ask Tom. And it happens to me, I don't know, two or three times a week. Um, uh, and I, what I do is I go in their Slack or their base camp or their email or WhatsApp. And I say, hey, so-and-so is asking a question. Um, do you have an answer? And then it'll be a DM or a specific uh, public, and then they'll tell me what to say. I mean, it works right. really, really well. Um, yeah. And they know that. And the thing is that when you have a social media manager, that's great. But they're a salesperson, okay? So right. nobody likes to think that they are. Well, that's why you don't hire some 15 year old who doesn't know how to talk to humans. Okay. <laughs> but, but salespeople don't always know all of the technical aspects of the, of any trade. 
that's why they're not yeah. the work. They're not a journeyman. They're a salesperson. So um, a lot of times uh, what happens is my client will say, actually, that should be a support request. Would you mind asking them? And I'll say, hey, would you do me a favor and send a support request? I just ping the team and they they're they they know that you're coming through. Right. And they're like, right. thanks, because people just want to be acknowledged. Not just, but people want to be acknowledged, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. um, that just happened. Another client, they're like, why is so-and-so's documentation so bad? And I, and I said, oh man, cause I've already, heard, we've already heard this. So I know the answer. I'm so sorry. We're working on it in 2021. Um, do you have a specific question? No, I just hate having you look through it. Like he was just being a complainer. That's fine. Right. You know, um, and we all complain. All of us. It's not bad. It just is. Right? Yeah. And a lot of times we go to social media to complain, but I want to make sure that they know we, we care about it. But also, what company do you know that has unlimited resources? Right. Well, the reason why the reason why I brought this up is like, for instance, I had a I had an issue with my um, with my uh, fireplace and it's a gas fireplace. I didn't know how gas fireplaces even worked. I've lived in an apartment my whole life. I, I haven't really played around with any of these sorts of things. And I wanted to I wanted to I had a red tag on it and I didn't know what the red tag meant. And so I'm like, oh, no, is this a gas thing or is this a is this a fireplace thing? Yes. So I, I went on to <laughs> Angie's list and I was like, hey, Angie's list, you know, um, I'm looking for somebody who who knows this stuff. Person replied back and they said, like, 95 percent of the time, the reason why one of those red tags is on there is because of the fact that you don't have this one little clip that needs to go inside of your chimney. And it's because you don't want, you know, you don't want to, like, die of, you know, of fumes coming into your house or anything mm -hmm. like that. Carbon monoxide poisoning. Right. And so I was like, oh. So this has nothing to do with like any of this stuff other cool. than the fact that I need to put a little clip on there. And so Safety. the person, so, I know, but the person says, she goes, I, you know, I want to save you $300. Like we don't need to come out to your house and install this thing. Can you just like go on Amazon? She even linked the product on Amazon. Really? Yep. Go on and click on the link and down and buy this $5 part and install it. And I know because of COVID and blah, 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 we would be more than happy to do a Zoom call with you on how to install this thing for 20 bucks. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So for them, the, this is this is where it comes down to this, this, this question I had for you, is if the person who is running the account didn't have that type of insider knowledge, how does that work? Or maybe they have that insider knowledge because they get this question all the time. So the reason why I'm saying this is that for the lead gen side of things, the cut, the you know, you being the social media manager and your customer should be giving you those, and you should be asking them, hey, what are the top questions that you guys usually get? Or by the way, I keep getting this question all the time. What should my response be? And I think 100%. that's a lead gen piece because to me personally, oh, it is. I'm going to go back to that person, that company, and I'm going to say, hey, remember that thing that you, you saved me, tw you know, $200 or $300 on? Um, I need you to now come out and do a chim chimney sweep for me. Right. And, and how do you feel little... about that company, Jason? I feel great because okay. I, 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 right. I spent $5 plus for Amazon Prime shipping for free and I didn't have to do anything. I know, but let's pause for a second. You feel yeah. great about this company. That's affinity. Right. And yeah. then you've already expressed your loyalty. Uh -huh. I'm going right. to use them for my Trinity sweeping, which uh -huh. will lead to sales. And yep. where did it start? It started from them answering a question online. Yeah. That's how it works. Yep. You be a helpful, polite human being. Yeah. I don't think I don't think all sales start with um, uh, you pitching them. No as a reply back. You don't need to reply back to them saying like, "Oh, we do that." Here's a link to it. No, no, it's it's expressing empathy. It's relating to them. It's feeling. Uh -huh. and if you start going, "Oh yeah, I I manage social media. I don't do that." I go, "Oh my gosh, list will help you so much," and then they'll go, "Oh." 
Do you, do you know where I can learn more about it? Oh yeah. BridgetWheeler.com slash Twitter list. Right. I'm not, I'm not pitching my services. I don't have room anyway, but yeah. even if I did, I wouldn't because the truth is ideally it's better if the customer can do their own or some of their own social media. The best results are always when they have me and then they're also available. That's always the best results. I mean, Rhonda Nygaard at last, I know she'll be fine with me saying this. I finally got her like, okay, so I'm going to give you some consistency, but you should still be you fat dog creatives. Last right. month she had 40,000 impressions. Wow. From like That's cool. something really smaller. Okay. Right. That's, you know, that's huge. Just a little bit of person. So you need the consistency because you need people going back to your website, but it's uh -huh. not a salesy way. And what I would say to my client, if they got a question more than three times, we that that needs to be addressed in documentation, blog post, or both. Makes sense. Which is why I did the epoxy injection video that brought <laughs> in so much money is still on YouTube because that was constantly what people were asking about. Right. So people do ask questions and being available and being helpful, but not spammy. Uh huh. You shouldn't be pushing yourself. You should just be help. Lead generation isn't a cold call from yeah. a mortgage broker. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Good lead, well, I mean, unless you just, unless you're going to turn and burn, those are just all going to be one time people. And then you're fine uh, with your attrition rate being ridiculous. But if right. you want to keep your customers, which it's what 40% cheaper to keep a customer than to get a new one. Uh -huh. That acquisition is hard. It's hard because you have to build a relationship. And the unfortunate thing about our developer culture mm -hmm. is that we feel uh, I know if people might be upset about me saying this, but I'm going to say it. We feel like people should know what we're talking about. What's wrong with you? You don't know what a browser is. You're right. not worth my time. Why are you breathing right. oxygen on this planet? It's not their job to know that. That's uh -huh. why they have you. Okay. <laughs> No, Jen, this is the button for the internet. That's not the button for the internet. Oh my God. What is this? Stop moving my lady. I like it where Ooh. she is, you know? <laughs> I love the IT crowd. Uh, but IT like we, so uh, we expect people to know what a glue lamp beam is. They don't care what a glue lamp beam is. They're right. never going to care what a glue lamp beam is unless no. they're trying to do their stucco and, the, and they have to go around it. <laughs> Nobody uh -huh. cares. It's not their job to care. It's your job. And it's not your job to get validation from your customers. Right. They don't need to know how great you are. They need yeah. to know that you can help them in their situation and that for their dollars, they're getting a good value. That's it. You mm -hmm. get We get our validation from our peers mm -hmm. and from ourselves, but mostly from our peers. That's how it always is. Yeah. I don't care that my aunt thinks I'm great on the internet. I mean, it's nice. Thanks, Aunt Patsy. But she doesn't know what it takes for me to do my job. And then when I explain it to people, like I, I taught Warren about how to put videos on YouTube and how to do it well and how to do the, how to do the subtitles and how to do the translation of the subtitles. He's like, whoa, I had no idea it was this hard. I'm, you're amazing. And I'm like, I knew that, <laughs> but they're like, I'll just put it on YouTube. You know, it was right. like when you were gone and I was a uh, man in the booth. I'm like, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. Jason's amazing at the being the great and powerful Oz. I'm not like, I can't handle all the buttons and everything you have to press. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's why we have our jobs, right? So go in there and not upset that they don't understand what you're doing. We don't want them to understand what we're doing. We want mm -hmm. them to pay us to do it. We want right. them to have a concept enough to know that we're valuable. 
Yeah. But we want them to hire us. Right. <laughs> but if you want to read this book, you could do it yourself. This is pretty 80% of what I do. Yeah. Yeah. You're 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 going off your own playbook. You know? Yeah, that is my playbook. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. So I feel like any business for any industry could spend five minutes a day in their home feed looking for two to three tweets to reply to and that their following will go higher. Follow people back. Stop worrying about people messing up your feed. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you're so worried about it, use a list for the love of God and all it's holy. <laughs> Do you think I, I, you think I want to hear from every single person in my 17,000 people? I don't. No. no. Not all at once. Okay. No. That's why I have lists. I want to look at my WordPress people. I want to look at my San Antonio people separately in different parties <laughs> at different times. Right? right? Right. But you still need to pay attention. And that's one of the downfalls of set it, forget it scheduling yep. and using a third party service. I use Twitter.com yeah. most of the time. And then Hootsuite. Hootsuite uh -huh. for my lists and to retweet. Uh, the old school way, but but a lot of times I like to be on Twitter.com. If you're not on Twitter.com, if you're not Twitter.com on your mo, if you're not on the mobile app, you don't know about fleets. And let me tell you, just I know we're over. I will tell you the good thing about fleets. Now I've seen people like just use the same story that they used on Instagram that they used on Facebook, which is basically cross posting, which defeats the entire purpose. The good thing about that story feature, no matter where you're using it on the mm -hmm. internet, is getting people voluntarily in your direct messages. Right, right. So if you already have their attention and they went, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. Don't ignore them. Yeah. Because you're leaving money on the table. Figuratively or literally. Yep. Yep. It is tour tip of the week time. Tour tip of the week. Da, 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 da. Bridget, you want to start us off with your tour tip of the week? Yes. This one is uh, medical. So I um, used Teladoc. Mm. Um, I think it's called Teladoc. Oops. I think it's teledoc.com, right? Oh, it's a bad gateway. Hmm. It's, oh, tell a doc. T E L A, I spelled it wrong. Teledoc.com. Uh. And I thought it was tell a, uh, but it's tell a uh, doc. <laughs> anyway, so the thing is that um, I, I do have short term health insurance when I moved here, but. Um, I, you know, I can't use Kaiser anymore because <laughs> they're in California and they're not in Texas. And I'm almost out of a prescription for mm. my postmenopausal world here. And sure. Alpha Medical doesn't do postmenopausal support for women yet. But I have talked to their chief medical officer and they are working on onboarding that. So thank Jesus for that. Um because I do have, I did sign up for my, you know, open enrollment. It's almost over, everybody. I did sign up for my health insurance, but guess what? I can't see my doctor until the first of January, uh, even though I already paid for. It. Like that's how it works, right? So I'm right. kind of in this weird middle, and I was like, well, maybe I'll, yeah, you know, I know who my doctor's going to be because I chose my primary care. Maybe I'll just go in there and pay cash to get this estradiol situation going on, and so I'm not stressing out about everybody trying to get their appointment in January, right? I just need a little bit of room, like maybe two weeks, just in case I can't get in there right away. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Teladoc, I just, I was like, there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way. So I found Teladoc and $75 um, that you can do a video chat or they can call you on the phone. But I knew this would be easy. All I have to do is tell my head of hysterectomy. This is what I'm on show them the screenshot of the Kaiser app that shows that's my prescription and right. 
So he called me like within 10 minutes and it was like seven o'clock central. He's like, ask me a bunch of questions. What other medications are you on? You fill out all that medical history. So it takes longer to fill out all your medical history than it does to actually have the consultation with your physician. But yeah. you get to talk to the um, physician. He asks, or he or she asks you these questions. They mm -hmm. ask you the questions. And then he and then he said, well, it was a he in my case. So that's what I'm saying. So then he asked me what pharmacy I wanted. And I told him Walgreens. And he sent it over. And then, um, so I prepaid $75. And then it got sent over to Walgreens. And then, like, I could go pick it up right now, but I have to wait for my couch. Right. Um, that's just my internal problem. But, like, yeah. it, they sent me a confirmation that said it was ready. I could pay with PayPal, which I like oh. because they don't have to have my credit card all the time. Right. Um, even though it's coming out of the same bank account, I just find it easier. Um, sure. And then uh, they'll give you 30 days of a prescription. So it's a really good way because I knew cash price would take longer. Yeah. It would be more. So I, most of yeah. the time, cash price for a doctor is like 175, 250. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is here in Texas, but I didn't want to go to urgent care for that. I don't need to be with all the COVID people. Right. I just need to not grow a beard until I see my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yep 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 or whatever right so right. the thing is that that is a really good service because especially if you know your body like you have a science infection i know it's amoxicillin you can tell them and you fill out this whole history so like mm -hmm. even though i'm getting health insurance another way i can when that comes to true when it comes to true oh good lord when it becomes true for me on january 1st when that health insurance is in is active i can put that insurance in there and still use teledoc i see that like for these routine yeah. things like i'm not thinking oh this is cancer okay right it's it's a prescription i'm gonna be on until they're like let's reevaluate this when you're like 55 mm. so i got a good mm -hmm. seven years left <laughs> you know what i mean it's like a thing. It's just a maintenance thing. I'm not diabetic. Yeah. I don't have a heart problem. It's not cholesterol medicine. So it was a good uh, resource. And the thing is that even though I do have health insurance right now, um, my, my deductible is so high, it's actually cheaper for me to use Teladoc. Huh. Makes sense. I mean, my Molina Healthcare, I think, is like six thousand dollar, or something high. Maybe it's forty five hundred dollars. It's a high right. deductible of out of pocket. Before, like, you know, you're paying right, right. that out. So essentially, First. it's like catastrophic. Right. You no, know, so that was like, okay, this is a real tool that I really, really used. <laughs> that really helped me literally last night at seven o'clock at night. It's 24 hours. That's that cool. means like, remember the days when like your kid had an ear infection Uh huh. and you're like dragging them to the ER in the middle of the night. Could you yeah. imagine how much easier that would be? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, my, um, with Kaiser, you know, we have the same sort of like teledoc type yeah. of service. And it's usually like a nurse that will, you know, answer the questions and then they'll, you know, send it up, you know, if they need to, so they can get the majority of the questions taken care of in the front lines of it. They and were so good at that. I've, great. I've, I missed that already. Yeah. But if you, you know, it's all state by state, so. Right. It works right. in Texas. Yeah. Well, my toilet tip of the week. Um, so. You know, sometimes you use a pro, you use a an app, but you're not using it for its intended purposes. I don't know if you've <laughs> ever done this before, Maybe. but I, I I find a cool little feature within the app, and I'm like, man, I wish I could use this for other stuff. And then I'm like, I can, like, if this app gives me the ability to do something, and it allows me to save it so I can use it elsewhere, then great. I should I, I should figure out how to do it. So. Let me give you a little uh, a little rundown of what I was what I was using and then um, how this all works. So um, I have an Instagram account called Created Imperfectly, 
and my my wife Jen and I run this account. And what it is is it's it's a way of like me keeping track of all of the things that we're doing in our house. But it also kind of helps me um, like showcase some of the cool things that I'm doing and and just you know keeps my family and my friends all up to date as to what I'm doing. And I'm not also like spamming my my main account with like here's a bunch of stuff that no one really cares about. And then people would end up like unfollowing me or whatever. So one of the things that Bridget and I have, have struggled with um, for years now is closed captioning. <laughs> and, and not only just closed captioning, but closed captioning that actually looks good and actually works well and, and is something that you can edit. So you're not just like throwing it out there and then you can't actually edit the closed captioning. You know, you say like a technical word, like for instance, this company, they make, they make a thing called the perfect 90 degree. Uh -huh. um, I want the little degree sign to show up. I don't want the word 90 degree you right. know, to, to show up there or straight flex. It's going to put a different word for straight. It's not going to use like, it's going to write the word straight like it normally would not, not uh, like the barren straight. So I, I wanted to come up with like a good way of being able to um, to get these uh, transcriptions done, or at least some type of something on the screen that people can read when they're you know standing in line or whatever. So here's me installing an exhaust fan, and you can see that the words are showing up on the screen oh. and they look cool. Is that the thing by Instagram? It is. Oh, I've been using it for. Um... So like, here's me like climbing up in the thing and I'm, I'm taking a look at, you know, where everything's at. And this, this particular video didn't have me talk, using that. But what I did is I, um, I was using that, um, that thing and it's called threads. Yes. And so, uh, threads came out last year for, I had to go look at their press release to figure out when it was that they came out with it. Uh, but it came out, uh, this time last year, or I guess a couple months ago. And what threads does is it's supposed to be a thing that lets you record like little video things. Oh, and like Marco share Polo? It. Yeah, and then share it with your friends and stuff. But one of the key features in it is that it will do the text on the screen and it makes it look cool. Like it's cool looking text on the screen. Yep. It has like all these statuses and like all this crap that I'm just never gonna use, right? So I, I literally have threads installed on my on my phone. Yeah. Not Not for any of this. <laughs> I'm only using it to record the video and then I save it yep. and then I go and load it up else, you know, for, for elsewhere. So like, here's me like, you know, ripping apart the bathroom again. And there's <laughs> probably some video of me like saying some stuff that was showing up on the screen. But, you know, I just, I wanted to be able to, to have those things show up on the screen. So it was easy to read and people were able to like figure out like, you know, I found this product. It's called straight flex, you know, and here's how this thing works. And so it, it gives you that the bad part is you can't change the color of it. So right. it's always going to be white. So you just need to make sure you're not putting on top of white like I am right now. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, this it's, it's great because it does have some filters. So if you want to like swipe to left and right, you can change the filters out. So you could have a filter that makes the whites darker, which is what I'm doing there. Oh, an overlay. Yeah. So you can kind of mess with that a little bit. And so it it's also like, you know, bleeps out curse words. It sure does. And it can do it ironically as well. So you can actually like click on a curse word that will bleep it out, or you can put the bleep button and it'll, it'll do it. <laughs> but it's like me explaining, like, you know, here's the things I'm installing and it has all of the, the silly mannerisms. All right. You know, let's talk about this. Like it, I don't know. It just, it seems like it, it does a lot better at, um, conveying things because you're able to actually say it in your own words instead of uh, kind of a, a weird little <laughs> so ikea was quite the ordeal <laughs> <laughs> as every ikea story starts <laughs> oh the dog it's the best for tiktok i saw it on tiktok and i have it for the same reason yeah, just for tiktok and so I started digging around and I'm like, who, who made this thing and, and why? Like, it's great. And then come to find out it's an Instagram product and it's probably one that's going to disappear at some point because that's what they do. Um, some of the feature, like the, some of these reviews are like, this feature sucks and this thing sucks, but I'm not using it for any of that. And right. I'm not trying to keep up with, you know, my friends and family that are not using Instagram for, for this way. Um, 
so it, it works good if you use if you use threads um like leave a comment in the in the you know down in the uh the comments below let us know about it i uh, i'm i'm super interested in seeing what other people are doing with threads but um to me it just seems like like the perfect way of being able to get that text on the screen and then and do it and one of the things that really kind of annoyed me about it i know we're we're just about ready to finish here one of the things that was really annoying is that when you go to save the video it saves it to your to your photos which is great the bad part is is that when you tell it to save it to your story it doesn't save it to your story it saves it to some special story that's just for threads users so i have to so save it is the video trying to be like marco polo it is trying to be like that yep so that's about it bridget thank you again as always for hanging out with me i appreciate it i i it's it's a highlight of my week and it's, it's one of those fun things to be able to sit here and talk about silly stuff like we just did and, do and your cool lead gen get learn. better Tell yes. us about it. We want you to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, there's our outro. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye. If you want to help us out, go over to patreon.com slash WP Watercooler, where you can be a patron over there. There's the fine folks that helped us out. Thank you very much, including Bridget Willard, who's not listed on there. Thanks, Bridget. If you want to uh, listen to us on the podcast, you can definitely do that. Go over to dayqrcore.com slash subscribe, or you can learn how to subscribe to this show and all the other shows that are on the network. We really appreciate that. Thank you very much for hanging out with us today. It's always been a pleasure to uh, be able to talk, talk shop with all you folks. Talk to y'all later. You have a good one. Bye-bye.